We are off to mainland China for a journey covering six provinces, going deep into ten impoverished counties. This journey is going to take us almost three months, covering thousands of kilometers in one go. In 2012, China had almost 100 million of its total population in poverty. What can be done to lift these 100 million people out of poverty within eight years? Besides feeding them and clothing them, what about giving them security for education, medical care and housing? On to the path towards no poverty, we are going all the way to the rainforest in the country's furthest south. Here I am at China's rainforest. Look, this is really like the Amazon rainforest. It is home to generations of indigenous people, the Li ethnic group. Tracking across deep gorges at the Yungui Plateau. The villagers told me since transportation was inconvenient, with no paved roads or bridges, for food and supplies to be transported up the mountain, you had to pay double the price. The zip line was once their only means of transport across the river, but it's extremely dangerous. One slip of the hand and you could fall into the river. From a remote autonomous prefecture, the villagers used to live in traditional huts like these. See, it looks like the ceiling can collapse any time. Off we go into the great northwest, the Gobi Desert. Wow, it's so windy, yes, I mean your awesome big brother. It's really too horrifying out there, isn't it? And finally, all the way onto the Sichuan Tibet Plateau. I'm heading towards the Sichuan Tibet Plateau, the Gansi Tibetan Autonomous Prefecture. Thanks to tourism, poverty alleviation efforts, and the influence of internet celebrities, this place became famous overnight. Treading the whole of China to see 10 areas once deeply impoverished. <laughs> Through how much effort, by how many people, paying how much as a prize, did they manage to walk out of impoverishment and thrive on no poverty land? After trudging thousands of miles, clouds and moon, the five of us, see, were towing some 20 pieces of luggage. We've just arrived at our first stop, Sichuan. The Liangshan Yi Autonomous Prefecture, located in the Hangduan Mountains in southwest Sichuan, is the most classic, extensive, contiguous, poverty-stricken areas. The prefecture has a population of over 5 million, half of which belong to the ethnic minority group Yi. One after another, villages spread across high mountains and deep gorges. The unique geographical landscape of the Daliang Mountains keeps this place virtually hidden from the world. Poverty has been a word stemmed on the back from generation to generation. There are about two million Yi people living here. It's only in the 1950s, after the founding of the People's Republic of China, that the slavery system was truly abolished. Before, they never even had the concept of having anything they could call their own. The Yi Stockhead village we're visiting is called Atelier Village. It's a classic impoverished village. Many people, or even the whole world, have heard of its other name, the Cliff Village. The whole village was built on a cliff at 1,500 meters above sea level. As the mountain slopes are just too steep, they can't even afford to have half a road for vehicles. 
so there was always just one way to go up or down the mountain. Along the cliff, thus standing at almost 90 degrees, they loosely built a rattan ladder, the ladders of heaven, that climbed all the way up 1,000 meters, thus almost as high as Tai Mo Shan in Hong Kong. To learn more about how the villagers live at the cliff village, we're especially here today to climb the ladders of heaven. They made it very clear just now, if you're afraid of the heights, just stop here. Oh, well, I, I shouldn't have fear of heights, I'll just try my best. I'm glad I have Pacha Yoga to climb these ladders with me today. We can say he has been through life and death with the villagers here, because he's their official for poverty alleviation. Judging from your bill, I think it's not a problem. Not a problem? Right, you do have confidence in me. To can be step by step is 2,556 steps in all. 2,556 steps? Let's go, let's start. The Atulia village official for poverty alleviation, Pacha Yoga, is from the Yi ethnic group. He was sent five years ago from the county city to station in the village. At that time, his uncle said, well, this village is not for humans. Then in 2016, for the safety of the villagers, the local government decided to build a steel ladder. It's safer for users, but poverty is still deep rooted up the mountain. I'm now climbing up the staircases up to the mountain to visit the legendary Cliff Village. As you can see, it's already quite steep, quite frightening. Oh. <音>我看看你 上也上不去,下也下不来,在山上待了好几天。现在今天那么大的太阳的话,嗯,基本上是上不去的嘛,哎呀。越来越多,越来越多。哎,我们也好困难爬山不多小时吧。多少时候还是还不能上去。没有
你看，要擦床更表拜拜的啦。大家，你走得很艰苦，但是你看得看得到的风景，你看不要，真的不要看，都是独一无二的。现在不要看了，我看一下你，你都不值得一,一览。看到，你看这这就是我们以前走的老路。你看，老路，然后，这以前，上面就是修成修成这个钢梯了。根本就冇钢梯的时候，佢哋就系咁样，即即即攀住嗰啲石，咁样就叫做上去上面噶啦。Those kids we saw on the way, so small, and they're carrying the school bags to school. The moms would hold on to them with a belt and go out. I'm horrified just seeing that. We've arrived. Here we are. This is our village, our beautiful village. The Cliff Village. We've arrived. The Cliff Village, the most classic of impoverished villages in the country. Over a hundred families of the Yi people live here. Their ancestors were nomads. They were traveling by over a century ago and found this a real century with breathtaking natural scenery and fertile land. Ages ago, the Cliff Village was much better than many other places. It's just that later on, Roads got to be built outside, but none here, so we lagged behind. Since he was born, Lavo spent all his life up the mountain. Let's have a look. Let's go in. This is my home. This is your home? Wow! Not a lot of space. The living room, bedroom, all here. So this is your living room and also where you sleep. And here's the kitchen. So you grew up here? It was not so nice back then. So this is the improved version already? Definitely. Did you have water, electricity supply then? No, definitely not. There was no water, no electricity or network. No mobiles or networks, that's for sure, but water and electricity are basic. It's all right without electricity, but water is a must. We'd go fetch water from a neighboring village. We'd get up and set off at about 5 a.m. every morning. It's not even dawn. That's right. You had to go earlier. They didn't have enough water for use over there either. Lobo, what was life like when you were small? When I was small, my mum would be out for work. I didn't know where my mum and dad would be working. So what happened if you're hungry? I'd just cry when I was hungry. Nothing else I could do. After I started school, I had to climb the cliff. The path was really too hard. Imagine how small you are in primary school and to go so far out. It's 14 meters above sea level here. We had to go up to 2,500 meters above sea level and then walk further. We had to start out before dawn and arrive at school just after dark. The path was just too dangerous. It's not a road, just rocks. If you're careless and you fall, you'd be in real trouble. You fall and it'd be a bye-bye. So you started school when you were eight? That's lucky of me. Some of us could only go to primary one when they were 12 or 13, because that's how the environment was like. We didn't know what the world outside was like before we were 17 or 18. There were no mobile phones or television. We didn't know what the world was like outside. We thought it's all the same. It's only after I was 20 and I went outside for work that I realized, wow, there were all those tall buildings out there. In the city, you could take a bus to school, or you could just walk some 15 to 20 minutes to school. We had to walk a whole day to school. There's such a big difference. After working a few years, I came back, because over here, 
It's the youngest son's duty to take care of our parents. My brother started his own family, so I came back and took care of mum and dad. So dutiful of you. Well, I should. <laughs> The big mountains are indeed blocking the path of young men like Labo. Where the future is going to take him, no one can give him the answer. A Tulian village official Pacha Yoga was stationed in this village five years ago to be the leader of the poverty relief project. When you first arrived, when you first saw how they lived, how did you feel? My first impression was it's really backward, very inaccessible. It's not reachable by road, and that's a huge problem. Yes, back then the mobile's only use was for telling the time, no signals. There was no network coverage, right? That's right. Yoga said the villagers had almost zero income back then. They planted this corn just for food themselves. It's not easy to sell it for money. You could carry it down but not get paid much. If people knew you from here, they'll pay you less. So you're from the cliff village. I don't think you're going to carry it all the way back. They forced it down by how much? 50%. They could force down the price like that. In fact, remote villages impoverished by lack of education like the Cliff Village can be found all over the country. It's not easy to get to the root of the problem. That's because poverty relief work used to go step by step, with broad coverage but making slow progress. In 2013, however, a modern strategy of targeted poverty alleviation was born. The first step, computerization. Hundred thousands of researchers were sent out, covering the whole country for a population census. As a result, 128,000 impoverished villages were identified, locking in on 99 million people living in poverty, while getting to know the reasons behind for targeted treatment. For every place, targeted measures were worked out. Millions of capable men like Pacha Yoga were then sent to station in the villages. How did you approach it? We visit the places in the daytime for research. At night, we would sit around the fireplace and discuss how we could deal with the things and work out the solutions. The whole village worked hard together and finally in 2016, good news came. The first farmers' professional cooperative was formed and they started to raise sheep together. And then we brought in the green peppercorns and started growing navel oranges. In August 2016, we started building the steel ladder. In 2016, the government invested over 1 million yuan for able-bodied men, including Labo and other workers to transport 120 tons of steel pipes up the mountain overcoming all the hardship and built the steel ladder of 2,556 steps. To us, this steel ladder is like a highway. To the villagers, this steel ladder is like a highway already because they can climb a lot faster now. In 2016, the villagers finally had their fresh water supply. The same year came the historic moment to the villagers. Power cable construction for the whole village was complete, and the 4G network too. The moment the signals got through, for the first time ever, the villagers could watch TV. After the steel ladder and the 4G network were built, this formerly small, remote and inaccessible village in the mountain became connected with the world. Connected? Truly connected, that's right. Many people in the village started using smartphones. Many young people make short videos and are doing live streaming too. In the beginning, they hardly had any fans. But even if there were just two or three people watching, they would speak very loudly in front of the camera. They get very excited. They didn't speak Putonghua well. When the netizens asked them something, they couldn't read, so they didn't know how to respond. 
but gradually, after doing live streaming for a while, they learn to read. They may not be able to write, but they can now read and understand. They are picking up more words. Through exchange with the netizens, they are getting stronger in their Putonghua skills. When they first started live streaming on the steel ladder and came across words they didn't know, they would say, Sir, what does it mean? And now they are far more capable in editing the videos too. I can't compare with them at all. And Labo became the first generation internet celebrity of the Cliff Village too. In January this year, the first guest house was open, and Labo did live streaming to invite netizens over for a visit. Remember to visit the Cliff Village and climb the steel ladder with me. We can walk through some primitive forests to the grasslands. We can pasture some cows and watch the sunrise. I'm waiting for you. When the outside world first learned about the existence of the Cliff Village, everyone got curious. Many visitors started coming from around the country and even from all over the world. The village quickly started to make a lot more income. Poverty relief work using the internet has brought in unexpected results. So in recent years, not just for the Cliff Village, China's big three telecoms have kept speeding up construction of networks to cover all 832 impoverished counties. In 2015, only less than 70% of the country's rural area had fiber coverage, and the remote villages, less than 25%. Yet in 2020, fiber coverage and 4G connection in the rural areas are about the same as in the city, at over 98%. There are over 2,000 remote and impoverished villages like the Cliff Village in Liangshan of Sichuan. To solve the problem of generational poverty once and for all for over 1 million people, a bigger systematic resettlement program in modern history was born. Sub 在住在那裡, 我根本上我都, 我都不知道說什麼, 真的,